Hello and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm Rebecca Felgate, and try as we may, all people want to talk about right now are the US presidential elections. Still, a lot of people think that Donald Trump will be a disaster, however, a lot of people think that he'll be a savior. Who knows? We need to let time do the talking, but for now, let's have a look at the top 10 presidents that were widely considered to be the worst in America's history. In at number 10, we have William Howard Taft, who was president between 1909 and 1913. President Taft organized the intervention and occupation of Nicaragua. He was also probably the sleepiest of presidents and was well known to doze off at public functions, including operas, church services, and funerals in general. His snoozy habits may have been because he was also in poor health, being obese at 350 pounds. He also reportedly got stuck in a bathtub at the White House. Of course, being in poor health doesn't necessarily make one a bad leader, but he did not set a good example for the ever expanding wastelines of America in an era beginning to embrace fast food. In at number 9, we have Warren G. Harding, who was president between 1921 and 1923. So I'm not sure if you want your lasting legacy as president to be that you were exceptionally horny. Warren only served two and a half years as president due to his ultimate untimely death from a heart attack age 57. Because of his death, history often saves him from too much embarrassment, however, it has now proven that amongst his many affairs, he fathered a love child with Nan Britton whilst in office. President Harding was also at the forefront of the Teapot Dome scandal in which federal oil reserves were leased to big oil companies for the politicians gain. Harding did have a lot of redeeming features too, he supported women's rights and equality for all races in America, so it wasn't all bad, but it's a shame his corruption makes it easy to overlook all of the good things. In at number 8 we have Millard Fillmore, who was president between 1850 and 1853. You can't blame a guy for trying, you can't blame someone for being an idealist, but you can blame someone for not standing up for what they believe in in the face of opposition. Despite being against slavery, to keep peace between the North and South, Fillmore passed the Compromise Act. This included the very controversial Fugitive Slave Act, wherein all escaped slaves would be forcibly returned to their masters. This was absolutely brutal and many considered it to be pandering to the South. Fillmore's actions postponed the Civil War, but did not get rid of the ill feeling on both sides. As he didn't address it, it had the chance to fester over 10 years. Ideally, a good president would address an issue, not delay dealing with them. This is for example why climate change is so important right now. In at number 7 we have Franklin Pierce. Pierce was a heavy drinker his whole life and made a string of questionable and often weak decisions. Although a northerner, he had southern ideology and was very very pro expansion and slavery. Pierce controversially revoked the Missouri Compromise and even tried to unsuccessfully annex Cuba. Like, leave Cuba alone. Although dogged by personal tragedy prior to his term as president, his questionable decision making made him very unpopular and he was not nominated for a second term. Theodore Roosevelt even called Pierce a servile tool of men worse than himself ever ready to do any work the slavery leaders set him. In at number 6 we have James Buchanan, who was president between 1857 and 1861. The problem with the 15th president of the United States was he had upheld slavery and was willing to go to unconstitutional lengths to make sure it stayed a non-federal debate. In the Dred Scott case, a case where a black slave was being hired out in a free state, Buchanan sympathised with the South and even persuaded Associate Justice Robert Cooper Greer to vote with the Southern Justices. Buchanan's pressure on a member of sitting court was not right and it was not constitutional. On top of his inability to declare freedom for former slaves, he also did nothing about succession. In at number 5 we have Herbert Hoover, who was president between 1929 and 1933. Prior to the election, as Secretary of Commerce, Hoover had already proven he wasn't exactly a humanitarian. This was following his treatment of African Americans after the Mississippi floods. During Hoover's presidency, the US saw the stock market crash of 1929, followed by the Great Depression. While not totally responsible, Hoover had some responsibility in the matter. He was convinced the economic downturn would be short term. Instead, it lasted 10 years. He was also very involved 
involved in Mexican repatriation. In a misguided response to the depression, Hoover was behind the repatriation which saw the midwestern and southern western cities force Mexican immigrants and their families to leave the US over concerns they were taking jobs away from whites, despite a legal right to stay. In at number 4 we have John Tyler who was president between 1841 and 1845. If this was a popularity contest then John Tyler, the 10th president of the United States, would definitely lose. John Tyler was hated by his entire party which is always pretty awkward. Tyler was the first vice president to become president from succession after William Harrison died from pneumonia 30 days into his presidency. Once president, he pretty much went against everything his party stood for including the national bank. He fought an impeachment attempt and all but one of his cabinet quit. He was also into many of the deplorable things people thought were ok back then including slavery. In at number 3 we have Richard Nixon who was president between 1969 and 1974. The 37th president of the United States Richard Nixon was the only president in history to resign. He did so because he did not want to face his impeachment trial which would have held him accountable for the Watergate scandal. Very quickly, 5 burglars broke into the Democratic National Committee and were traced back to the Nixon administration. A Senate committee discovered that Nixon had various recording equipments and was recording some private conversations in the White House. The tapes were released to the Supreme Court who then discovered that the president was trying to cover up the scandal. This led to the uncovering of multiple instances of abuse of power from Nixon and his team which is absolutely not acceptable from a president. Despite the scandal which mars his presidency, he did actually do quite a lot of good. He pulled out of Vietnam, reopened good relations with China, he partly defused the nuclear arm race, he funded cancer research, he funded environmental research and he also continued to end segregation. Just goes to show though you will probably only be remembered by the bad things you do. In at number 2 we have Andrew Jackson. Many far right republicans argument for wanting to limit immigrants into the United States seems to stem from a concern that too many immigrants would change things, that their beliefs would impose on the already treasured current culture. A worrying thought indeed, but no different from the first few generations of Americans and their treatment of the Native Americans, the original dwellers of the land. Andrew Jackson was instrumental in America's expansion, but also in the murder and displacement of thousands of Native Americans. The United States 7th President Jackson was a wealthy slave owner nicknamed the Indian killer. His administration removed 46,000 Native Americans from their home. His displacement and inhumane handling of the Cherokee people was later dubbed the Trail of Tears. Interestingly, Jackson was also the founder of the Democrat Party, proving that the issues of slavery and Native Americans was non-partisan in that era. Here we are, we're at number 1 and it is George W. Bush who was president between 2001 and 2009. It's still very early to see how history will look upon George W. Bush, however he has the lowest approval rating of any president. His approval rating was just 19% in 2008. George W. Bush had to deal with a lot. He was truly tested as a president by acts of terror as well as natural disasters. Had he not been tested this way, I imagine he would have been a reasonable president. But it is one's reaction in a time of crisis that defines who they are. Following 9 11, George W. Bush botched a case to invade Iraq and never found any weapons of mass destruction. He proudly claimed mission accomplished in 2003, but the war carried on for the best part of another 10 years. Not to mention, the war set the groundwork for the creation of ISIS and more vehement extremist uprisings. He was in office as his soldiers were responsible for the inhumane treatment of Abu Ghraib. He also had a very underwhelming response to Hurricane Katrina, which of course prompted Kanye's live television attack. George W. Bush also put into effect the Patriot Act, which does have some benefits, but created a sneak and peek culture, meaning the US government has free reign to spy on people. As we said, time will tell with that one, but the death of half a million Iraqis and 4,500 US servicemen is quite the death toll to have on your decision making hands. So that was the top 10 worst US presidents. Do you guys agree with this list? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, no hate. This is a hate free discussion. I'm Rebecca Fargate. This has been Most Amazing Top 10. If you like this video, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, and of course, subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10. And I will see you next time.